All right, let's make this simple pillow. So I've laid out for you everything that you're gonna need to make this pillow. I believe after this course, I probably won't do this for you anymore, uh, especially when we're making a pillow because you're gonna know by then what it is that you need. And it's also on the handout. So we have here my iron, polyfill, which is stuffing for your pillow. Then I have straight pins, and this time I'm using straight pins with out the plastic head on them or the pin head. I'm using the all metal ones because I'm gonna be ironing over them and I don't want my plastic, uh, the plastic pin head to melt. In case you want one of these and don't have one yet, um, I gotta tell you they're really useful because they keep all your pins together when you're working. But if you don't have one yet, you could just take a magnet off of your fridge and it pretty much works the same for now. Also, I have my shears that I only cut my fabrics with, and I have my choice of fabrics that I'm gonna use for my pillows, my point turner, which you don't really need yet, okay? I'll show you other options, and my seam ripper, my coordinating thread, and also my threaded, double threaded needle. Okay, so, one of my favorite pin cushions. I love it, I had to show you it. All right, let's get going. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut out my pattern and your simple pillow pattern tells you cut two out of fabric. Now remember from our previous class, you always cut your patterns on the wrong side of the fabrics. And usually most fabrics, especially these printed con cottons are very easy to see which is the wrong side and which is the right. Now, since for my square pillow, I'm gonna make uh, the front and back the same pattern. I'm just gonna fold this in half and pin this down and cut it out. Now, when you're pinning, remember, it's in through the front, out through the back again. I'm just gonna use four pins. That's more than enough. Put the pin right through. And when you're pinning, you, don't, you wanna make sure you don't come out all the way over the pattern just like that because you're going to have to cut here and you can't really get through the pin with your scissors or I should say shears. I always make that mistake. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pin this all down. Four is all you need. Now you have a choice. You can either use your pencil and trace this pattern all the way around or you can just cut with your shears. Pretty simple, straightforward. Whichever way you are more comfortable doing. I am very comfortable doing it this way, so I am going to cut straight, right close to the pattern with my shears. Now here's something that I want to tell you when you're cutting with shears and you're cutting out your fabrics. You wanna cut your fabrics and close the scissor all the way down because if you don't and you take little snippets, you create things these little jagged edges like that, and you don't want that because you want a really neat project inside and out. Okay, so here's what I mean. When you're cutting, you wanna close the shears down all the way. And this way, this gives you almost always the most perfect cut. Almost there, one more side. Okay, now that we're here, don't worry if it's a little sticking out of the uh, pattern. If it bothers you, because you're a perfectionist, it's okay, I'm feeling your pain. You could just take it off. You don't need to though, because this will be on the inside of the pillow. Put your scraps aside and remove your pins. And you can put your pillow pattern aside too. I like to save my patterns because I always make things over again. So you may want to consider that. Now, when you're sewing, just like we did with the pouch in the previous class, you want to keep your two right sides together. So they're already the way you need them. So I'm going to put my pins right back on. I removed them to take the pattern off, but now I'm going to put them right back on so that I can get ready to sew. Four is all you need, one in each corner. You don't need more than that. And now we are going to start sewing. But before we do, we have to consider where we are gonna leave the opening, on which side. And enough of an opening, large enough to get at least your four fingers in to stuff the pillow with the polyfill. 
So what I'm gonna do is make a marking with my pencil. If you want, you can even put a piece of tape here to mark it. It's however, whatever works for you and however it helps you. But for me, a simple marking is more than enough. And now what I'm gonna do after my marking is I'm gonna stay about a quarter of an inch away and I'm gonna sew all the way around the perimeter of my pillow. But here, this is the no sew zone. I'm not gonna sew there. I need to leave that open. So just like my previous class, if you need, you can draw yourself this guideline. About a quarter of an inch in. Don't go much uh, further. You don't need to, because then your pillow's gonna come out really small. But remember, as I showed you with the pouch, you don't wanna get too close to the edge because what happens is your pillow will fall apart. A nice light line is all you need. Now, in the events that you are working with a dark fabric or a black or a really heavily patterned fabric, you could use a white colored pencil or a white chalk pencil or something else to make your marking. I would never use a marker or a ballpoint pen because those tend to leak and ruin your fabric. The markers definitely bleed and will ruin your fabric. And you don't want that to happen, really. You're working so hard. Let's keep it good. Okay, so you are going to start sewing, and it doesn't matter on which side you begin because both sides are going to be the inside of the pillow. And just like before, you're going to stay on the line, okay? You're going to make believe that this is a car. Probably not old enough to drive yet, but this is a car. You can imagine it's a video game. That's better. And you're going to work your way all the way around the pillow, doing five or six stitches per inch. As I'm continuing to sew, I actually turned off the video because I know you're too busy um, sewing your own pillow. You don't need to look at mine as I'm working, but you're gonna make sure you have five or six stitches per inch. Also, I'm using a little bit of a thicker cotton, so I decided to put a thimble on my finger and it helps me push the needle through without hurting my finger. So if you need one, you should get one too. They're really helpful. Uh, here's what I wanted to remind you. When you get up to the pins and as you sew, if they're in your way, you can remove them. So as I pass my pins here, I remove them. That's always something my students ask me. Definitely remove them, but don't remove them before because the whole point of pinning is to hold your fabrics together. If you try to sew these squares together without your straight pins in, what happens is the fabrics move and you'll get a pretty crooked pillow. So here's what I wanted to remind you. I have about this much thread left, a little bit more than three inches. Now, what you have to do is you have to end off your stitch right here, okay? So just like I showed you before, you are going to go through the last stitch or make a tiny new stitch just like I did and put the thread through the loop. And again, go through that stitch, put the needle through the loop. You're going to trim this, and then you're gonna re-thread your needle with a double thread, double knot it, and then continue sewing all the way to the other end of the opening. Okay, so I have sewed around the perimeter of my square pillow. And as you can see here, I use the magic knots. That's why they kind of look a little messy, but it doesn't matter because this is gonna be on the inside of the pillow and no one's gonna see it. It's just my little secret. Okay, so I wanted to remind you that since this is the opening right here, this is where your stitches are gonna get the most pressure when you turn the pillow right side out. So I wanted you to make sure that you did a really good end off stitch. Now, of course, I mentioned that this is a little bit thicker, this fabric of mine, so I'm gonna use my thimble to push my needle through and make sure you give it really good end offs. You know, sometimes just to ensure that I don't have an issue here, sometimes I do it three times, because why not? The, the stronger, the better. I don't want it to, it's slipping with my thimble, but I don't want it to break as I turn it around because it, it is upsetting. Okay, I'm just, there we go. Uh, so when you put all this work and then the pillow sort of breaks. So I'm going to trim this 
And remember, just like we did for our pouch, get that thimble off because everything is slipping. I'm going to trim the corners. Don't trim the actual stitching, just the corners. Very close, because if you don't trim these, what happens is they get stuck in the corners and you can never really get a nice square corner. So now when you turn this right side out, it is just like turning a t-shirt out of the wash and dryer from the neck right side out. You know, sometimes you turn your t-shirt or sweater right side out, same thing here. This is the fun part really, because you're gonna see the pillow uh, that you've created and what it looks like. So now you're gonna use your good fingers. These are, not that you have bad fingers, but these are the best tools you have here where you're gonna actually put your fingers into the pillow and push out these corners to the best you can before you use something else, like your point turner. So I have the point turner here and I'm gonna gently push this out. But again, if you don't have a point turner, here's a really good thing you can use. You can use a chopstick if you have, or you can use shears that are not, when you touch them, they don't pinch, they're not really sharp. Okay, so here's how the chopstick works, same thing. Okay, pretty good, right? I'm sure you could get your hands on one of those, or you can use um, a really dull pencil, but be super careful that you don't poke through, because I don't want you upset after working so hard on your pillow. So now here's what you're gonna do. I mentioned in the past classes that when you cut fabric on the end, it frays. I believe it was class two when we learned how to sew. This is fraying. So I'm going to tell you to turn over your fraying or your unfinished edges. You're going to turn them over so you have a nice even line here. Okay. I'm actually looking at that corner saying, hey, I need to poke you out a little more because a square pillow needs to have four nice corners. Okay, so I poked this out, po poked out all four of my corners, and now I turned in my raw edges, and I'm gonna use one pin. You may need two, but I'm just gonna put one, and I'm gonna hold this down so that when I iron, I can create a crease here. We need a crease right here so that when we are doing the invisible stitch, it guides us along. 